hi guys welcome back welcome back to the channel so good to have you on with me today welcome to this live stream special one we are looking at cortisol and we're going to be talking about cortisol effects um, especially for women's health looking at issues around menstruation menopause and what is it about this stress hormone so a little bit of a chit chat and ask and answering and um, frequently asked questions about the role of cortisol and how we can balance it in the body and reduce some of those effects that it would have so we're going to go through that in a few moments but just to ask how are you guys doing how was it last week how was your week how have you been um busy week for me last week and busy week this new week coming on um, but yeah, all good. Life is good. I hope you're all well. So if you've just uh, clicked on the video and come onto the channel for the very, very first time, welcome. My name is Dr. Sylvia. I'm a consultant in general practice and I'm based here in the United Kingdom. And I am the anchor for Ask Away Health. I am the founder. I am the creative director, the clinical director of Ask Away Health. And our aim in this channel is just to talk about um, issues around our health, women's health in particular, but also sexual and reproductive health and everything that pertains to our family health. So we really talk about quite a few things on the channel. Um, by way of disclaimer, yes, I'm a general practitioner, but the purpose of the channel is not to be your medical practitioner. That's not possible. It's not feasible. I do share information that will help to educate, provide awareness, and even signpost you, but I can't specifically diagnose um, your health condition. So you're welcome here. Welcome to ask questions, but if it relates to something specifically with, with regards to your own health and um, answering a question about some condition or the other of course I can't provide that not only because not only because I'm not your licensed practitioner I am licensed definitely to practice medicine in the United Kingdom but I'm not your own medical practitioner plus I don't have access to all the useful information about your health background and so on and so forth that would help me make a um, decision or help me provide you the advice that you need so we're providing general education here anyway with that said with that out of the way um, we're looking at cortisol and the way I want to do it is by reviewing an article on our blog post or um, on our uh, blog website, Ask Away Health, um, because we do have a channel that is dedicated to um, blogs and posts, but where we also have a health advice or health information service, which um, you can use for, you know, I was just saying that I can't provide you health um information specific to your own health here on YouTube, but I can provide some of that tailored to your specific need via the web channel. And so I'm going to be sharing um, our screen so we can look at that particular blog post that we put out on cortisol just a few days ago to try and break things down a little bit. Some of you may have read the, the post or some of you might be coming across it for the very first time and you may still have some more questions. This is our opportunity to do that. So let me share my screen and bring us onto that, um, bring us onto that post. Uh, bear with me. So uh, let's see. Okay, so you should hopefully, you should hopefully be, um, yeah, I've started right at the bottom, haven't I? So that is the post. Um, so let me just make sure that we've got all the bits and pieces and you can still see me. Fantastic. So we're talking about cortisol. I'm not going to go through the entire post. It is really quite comprehensive and that was done intentionally because there is so much um, about cortisol. And by all means, please go back and read once we've finished. The website is askawayhealth.org. Uh, let me just go to the home page here. So yes, this is the website, askawayhealth.org, and you're welcome to come and check it out. Like I said, we can provide tailored health information to you via the email health information service. You just go to ask me a question. You're welcome to do that. Um, we're happy for donations to support the work that we're doing because we only charge very minimal um, rates for the service that we provide. And of course, we've got our video library here. And we've also got a concierge service where we have a tailored um, support service for your health journey. So it may be something to do with general health or women's health, um, habits and addictions. And we do cover um, quite a few things. Um, and of course, here's the blog. So we're looking at the specific blog um, section today looking at cortisol but there is a wealth of different 
conditions that we talk about. We publish um, one or two blogs every week. So you can also join um, the newsletter service by subscribing here. If you go right to the top of the page, the subscribe button takes you to the um, space where you can register to join the community, which will allow you to access um, and receive our regular blogs and newsletters. Okay, so let us go to cortisol, which is why I know you're here today, the infamous stress hormone. So we all know about cortisol, but do we really understand its role in our bodies, how it affects us, um, particularly as women? Cortisol um, has it's it has a complex role it has a complex role it's a hormone um and hormones are chemical messengers who have very special jobs in the body they're like going they're, they're being sent from one part of the body to achieve one action or the other and without them um the, the, you can have very serious illness if they are uh, if there are excessive amounts of them, you can also have serious illness. So that brings into the question the issues around balance. Okay, so and that balance, imbalance problems can affect any type of hormone, and we are looking at cortisol in particular. So, like we, like I said, it's known as the stress hormone. It's a vital hormone. It is produced by the adrenal gland. So let me just take a little break because I I love to share, um, if it's possible. So these are the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, okay, there are two organs located at the top of your kidneys, at the top of your kidneys on either side. That's what the, that's where the adrenal glands are located. So that's where cortisol is, uh, is made. Um, but in terms of how it works and how it's produced and how it comes into your system to do the job it, it does, it's regulated via a complex system that involves the brain and the adrenal glands. So first, the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, produces um, a, a hormone called CRH. And CRH is usually, um, usually comes out, the brain produces or pushes out CRH when there's stress or different changes around the environment or in your body. That CRH then goes to affect another organ in the brain, which is known as pituitary, the pituitary gland. And it triggers the pituitary glands to produce another hormone called ACTH. And that goes into the bloodstream. Is this second hormone ACTH that then signals the adrenal glands to release cortisol into the blood where it can then begin to do the different things that it does. So those are the, those are the adrenal glands in purple, color above your two kidneys as I show in that drawing. Okay, so now that we have cortisol in the blood, <laughs> what does it do? Many, many, many things apart from, I know that we refer to it as a stress hormone, which is, yes, that is also what it does, but it helps to regulate metabolism. And that's really important, something that we're understanding more and more in terms of the challenge. When we, when we come to that section, when we talk about the issues with um, weight gain or weight changes, particularly around um, perimenopause, or as people grow older, some of the challenges with losing weight um, can be linked to cortisol imbalance, especially when people are um, have gotten into a pattern of a chronic stress, high stress kind of life, and there's some uh, they, they're not having enough sleep or making um, diet choices that do not support good balance of cortisol with other hormones. So let's remember, please, that all these hormones are supposed to work in tandem with each other. No one is supposed to be working well, and then the other is not working well for the body to be whole. They all have to be working in good balance. Um, so it's important that we don't just blame cortisol alone as being responsible for um, ill health in um, stress conditions. Other hormones are also um, affected. Um, but cortisol has a, a role in metabolism, helping to break down carbohydrates, fats and proteins and converting them into energy. It also plays a role in controlling our blood sugar levels reducing inflammation so blood sugar levels so that's relevant for diabetes it's also important in reducing inflammation and presence of inflammation we know can be associated with so many different conditions and we're learning more and more things like of course cancer things like fibroids things like endometriosis and we're learning about the role of inflammation especially some of these conditions that we still don't understand how they happen perhaps there could be some of these uh, hormones imbalance being uh, involved in their development, regulating blood pressure, memory formation, and so on. 
Okay, so um, specifically with regards to what the job that cortisol does, so it's released in response to stress. So it, its job is to help the body to cope with stress by increasing the amount of energy we have available, um, enhancing metabolism. Um, when it comes to the metabolism, it helps to increase blood sugar le levels, um, helping to promote the breakdown of fats and proteins for energy. It also has an effect on the immune system, like I was talking about, its role in inflammation. So when there's acute stress, cortisol can help to suppress the immune response um, for a short while, just to make sure that the body's resources are prioritized towards dealing with immune, uh, sorry, immediate threats. Um, it has an effect on the, on the heart, the cardiovascular system, um, it can also have an effect on the bone, um, and again, that will be um, that will be relevant not just for specific conditions like Cushing's um, syndrome, which is when you have excess amounts of cortisol being produced, but things like um, osteoporosis, thinning bones, which is relevant as we as we grow older and get into menopause. So that is not just estrogen um, um, deficiency. That we're talking about when we talk when we come to thinning bones and osteoporosis around menopause, um, um, a imbalance of cortisol can also be affected there. So, of course, the brain it's um, relevant in terms of brain function. It can help. It can affect thinking, memory, emotional responses. It can even in impact the skin. It can have an effect on, <clears throat> excuse me, skin health and wound healing processes, and it can affect reproduction which is also important for women. And I think we're going to have a little bit um, of a look of how cortisol does affect the menstrual cycle in a moment. So how does cortisol work in our daily activities? Now, cortisol is a hormone whose level go up and down throughout the day. So it's highest really is when you first wake up, when you first get up in the morning, well, when you first wake up in the morning, that's the highest level it, peak. it peaks at that point. Um, it's, actually, it's actually doing that to help wake us up and then its level gradually goes down towards the evening and the end of the day to help us sleep. But its levels can also shoot up when there is stress and that stress can be whatever type of stress, whether it's physical stress, you know, um, somebody, a, a car accident, for example, or emotional stress or, you know, environmental stress and so on. Okay, so um, cortisol helps the body cope with stresses. Uh, we've talked about all that. So the cortisol's daily rhythm and the way it's produced follows the circadian rhythm. Like I've said, levels high in the morning and low at night, and it is related to our sleep-wake cycle. All right, so in terms of how it affects women's health, let's look at the menstrual cycle. So we, we talk about that. I think what, the, what I really wanted to bring out here is how cortisol... <clears throat> potentially the levels of cortisol are higher according to some studies um, during the first half of the menstrual cycle it's called the follicular phase which is when you know the first few days that we have a period um, let, let me backtrack so the menstrual cycle is the um, an average 28 day period that a woman experiences from one, one um, episode of bleeding or menstruation to the next episode of menstruation on average 28 days okay now that is divided into two into half okay and you have the first phase which is follicular and the second phase which is luteal phase and the midline is usually the period of ovulation that's usually the midline that's or what divides these two halves of the of the cycle so the follicular phase is when the first few days is in, you have bleeding of uh, the the um, loss of blood from the from the womb for three to four days of the cycle, then the remaining sort of ten days of that cycle, then that's when the womb is preparing for ovulation, preparing for the possibility that um, a an egg is going to be fertilized and all the other um, business that will go on with that. So in the first half of the cycle you've just had your blood flow, then you have 10 days, your body is changing internally, different things are happening. Well, I think what is key about cortisol's role here is its uh, role in terms of affecting your mood and energy levels because women may be more alert and energetic during the follicular phase because 
of slightly higher cortisol levels. Now, it doesn't mean that cortisol levels will just drop in the next, in the second half of the cycle. They may go down a little bit, but not too much. Um, so what you may experience is that during that second half, after ovulation has happened, because at this point, what your body is expecting is that the egg that was released will be fertilized. So your body is just trying to get, trying. your womb is now trying to get prepared for, um, for your womb is now trying to prepare for supporting a fertilized egg. That's really what should be happening. But in the event that, uh, you know, there was no fertilization, then the womb instead will be preparing to evacuate or remove some of its content along with the egg. That is for the next menstruation that's going to come up in a few days time and so this luteal phase and um, sometimes the cortisol levels may drop a little bit and this can affect your mood and energy mean that you're less energetic and um, less uh less uh you know what's the word now I, I think if 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 during the first half your mood was sort of up and you are more motivated more creative i think that's the word i'm looking for so during the second half of the cycle you may be less so um not that you lose your creative function altogether but it is less than what it was and so knowing this about your cycle may, may help women knowing this possible effects of cortisol may help you plan in terms of right you know that you're going to be a lot more productive a lot more focused a lot more alert during the first half of the cycle just after your period and then towards the end of the month and you're maybe a little bit lower a little bit less able to do that and that could be because of cortisol and um, so being aware of that can be very useful okay so um, chronic stress and um, female hormones, there is some effect. It might lead to, that is when you experience chronic stress because of high cortisol. So cortisol levels are not coming down as they should because we are just constantly stressed. And like I said earlier, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be environmental types of stress, whichever it is, it just pegs our cortisol levels at a higher um, at, it pegs our cortisol at a higher level than they should. Um, and that can affect different things. It can affect the menstrual cycle and make it irregular. It could lead to fertility issues. It may, and because we, it's not proven yet, but you see conditions like endometriosis, PCOS, and so on, we still don't know exactly why they happen. We don't know exactly. We know that, okay, there's hormone imbalance. We know that it has to do with, you know, uh, um, these effects on the womb tissue and on the ovary, but why, why, what exactly is it? We are still not a hundred percent sure. Okay, of course, there's an effect of cortisol on pregnancy. Um, it's a little bit higher because uh, cortisol is one of the uh, is related to the production of progesterone. Actually, so progesterone progesterone will go higher when you're pregnant because progesterone is the pregnancy hormone supports your pregnancy, um, and so cortisol levels naturally will be a bit higher just to support the growth of the baby and help to do the other functions. So, how does cortisol affect menopause and perimenopause? I'll just take this as one. So, I think that's a really important area, and I'm just going to keep this picture up here because that's a challenge that many of us who are menopausal might experience when it comes to cortisol um, and I put it up here because it, it, it's, it's one of the challenges and there are many challenges for a number of women when we enter into menopause and it, has, it can be to do with just some of the menopausal symptoms like hot flushes and night sweats um, but also issues with concentration, is issues with memory, but of course, physical issues with sleep, tiredness, blah, blah, blah. There, there's a lot. I'm not trying to disparage them. I'm just saying that there's quite a lot. And I have a lot of menopause videos on the channel and you're welcome to go and have a look at them. We talk about them and I don't want to sort of digress too far, but the one I want to focus on particularly um, is a challenge with losing weight or maintaining or gaining weight, if you like, <laughs> uh, on maintaining a, a sleek physique or a healthy weight and shape that as you would want. Uh, it can be a lot more challenging and it may be as a result of cortisol um, imbalance in our system. And that's one of the reasons I thought it was useful for us to grow. So cortisol does affect menopause. Its levels can fluctuate during the menopause, contributing to the symptoms like hot flashes and mood swings. But if we're stressed and, you know, by the time we get into the menopause, we're usually 
um, a lot busier. Life is not so carefree as it was when you were in your teens or your 20s, if I may use that uh, expression loosely. Not saying that people in their 20s or teens don't have um, issues or busy lives. Of course, we all do. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that by the time you get into the uh, menopause or perimenopause, perhaps you've started a family, you've got kids, young kids, and you're having to look after them. You're Maybe you're a carer or you're now the caregiver for family, uh, or you have very, very busy jobs. You may be in management positions and so on, things that contribute towards stress. Um, so it may it, it could be that because we are in that stage of life, perimenopause and menopause experiencing these symptoms, um, we have high cost, we then develop high cortisol levels, which in turn, because remember we said that this is one of the uh, effects of cortisol is on metabolism. Because of this imbalance, we now experience higher chance of fat deposits around the tummy. Um, so we're battling um, not just the fluctuating estrogen, we're also battling fluctuating cortisol and cortisol imbalance. And because of stress, we may experience high cortisol levels. Um, and so it's really important to be aware of this when you're thinking about your health around the perimenopause or menopause. Okay, so let's look at um, specific scenarios around, let me just take this off. Let's look at specific scenarios around cortisol, okay, when it's too high or too low, because we we'll talk a little bit about uh, being too low, but, you know, the, the gist of this is to try and see how, what can we do to reduce or balance cortisol. So if you have um, very high cortisol, we've said it over and over again, it can be because of stress, but, you know, there are other different conditions where you could have um, um, high cortisol is not just stress. Um, but if that if that does happen, so for example, it could be from a condition known as Cushing's disease. And Cushing's disease is a condition, is actually a tumor of the brain. And um, if you remember, I was just talking about, oh gosh, I thought I had a good picture. I haven't uploaded it. I'm sorry. Um, no, nah, I haven't uploaded the picture. I thought I had a good picture demonstrating Cushing's um, or I might actually be able to share the screen briefly so you can see the image. Um, I'm just trying to find it if it's still on my system. And I will just share just so you can have a view. So Cushing's disease, I was just trying to explain, is when uh, there is a tumor in the, um, in the brain that leads to excessive amounts of cortis, uh, excessive amounts of the hormone that triggers the production of cortisol. So because the hormone um, is high, it triggers the production of cortisol, then cortisol level is high, and you develop something called Cushing's disease. And the effects of that would go all around the body because, like we said, cortisol has an effect on so many, cortisol has an effect on so many different um, functions within the body. So if somebody has um, high cortisol, I'm actually just trying to find the image which I thought I down I um, had downloaded earlier, and um, uh, if I don't get it, then don't, uh, I don't get it. That's a shame. Okay. Um. Do, 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 yeah. Uh, well, the one I've got here is demonstrating Cushing's syndrome. So just don't, don't be confused, okay? Bo in both cases, you effectively have high cortisol. It's just that the disease is specifically as a result of, <coughs> excuse me, the disease is specifically as a result of the tumor in the, in the brain that I just mentioned. While Cushing's syndrome is as a result of um, elevated cortisol from so many different reasons, like taking medication, um, corticosteroid medication, um, or tumors of the adrenal gland itself. Okay, so that's just the difference. In both cases, um, you would have high cortisol, but Cushing's disease is just one type of the Cushing syndrome. Okay, I think I've just given up on finding that image. I'm sorry, I should have prepared it, but I didn't. Let's just move ahead. Okay. So if you have too much cortisol from whatever cause, different problems could happen. Challenges with weight, blood pressure problems, sleeping problems, mood problems. So we generally, if a woman has a high cortisol level, see that she has excessive weight gain. So 
just like we saw in that image. I'm going to bring it back now, just like we saw. So excessive weight gain is a problem, especially around the tummy. So this is what they usually say or refer to as the cortisol belly. OK, you could also have high blood pressure. And with that, you might have headaches. So you and to be fair, they can be independent. Um, but sometimes headaches are a feature of high blood pressure. But both of them can occur independent of each other if you have high cortisol. Sleep problems, like you, we said. There may be problems with the bowels, for example, constipation. And we've talked about how cortisol could affect the mood. So low mood, being irritable, um, cold indicates somebody who has um, Cushing's, uh, uh, sorry, high cortisol uh, levels. I mentioned the effect on the skin earlier. So somebody with high cortisol level may experience um, skin that doesn't heal properly or heal quickly or thinning skin, skin that gets bruised easily, um, tiredness, thin bones, difficulty concentrating. So if you have any of these um, and to the degree that you're, you're feeling unwell with them, please, please, you should be having a chat with your doctor so that we can look at the tests that we can have to, to, um, to detect and then proceed with treatment if that is necessary. Okay, what about low cortisol? So we've just talked about high. Low cortisol um, is also known as adrenal insufficiency, of course, relating to the adrenal gland, but again, can have many different causes. Um, the, and can I say again that Cushing's disease and syndrome, these are rare, okay? They're rare, but you know, we, we mentioned them because uh, these are quite, uh, sort of within the medical community, sort of reasonably well-known um, conditions. But in terms of looking at the cause, they are considerably rare compared to other causes, for example, like medication. And um, similar, when you're talking about low cortisol level, there is a condition known as Addison's disease, which is an autoimmune condition, which is where the body's immune system um, <laughs> mistakenly attacks itself. In this case, it's attacking the adrenal glands. So let's take this screen off because now we're talking about low cortisol levels. Um, so back to looking at the adrenal glands. So when the adrenal glands are attacked by your, by the, um, um, when they're, uh, uh, in terms of the, it, the body itself is attacking the adrenal glands, then you're going to have this condition. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me a moment. <laughs> I think it's the effect of too much talking to this. I've just had to, I've just had to wet the water pipe. Okay, so uh, Addison's disease is where the body's immu immune system it's mistakenly attacks and injures the adrenal glands, and that can affect the production of cortisol. Um, now this is a life-threatening. This is a condition that can mean life that can have life-threatening implications. Um, it's really a condition that you have to be aware of. Um, certain restrictions, if I if I may use that term, um, most people may need to be on some kind of maintenance dose of a steroid <clears throat> with Addison's. Um, if they fall ill with illnesses that others would con consider fairly straightforward, maybe like a stomach bug or a urinary infection or something like that, <clears throat> they might need to have. Um, um, they may need to. They, they, they should be given um, steroid very quickly otherwise their bodies might shut down otherwise they may it might be fatal um if it's not if they're not treated properly so addison's disease even though rare it's an important condition is associated with low cortisol levels um, and the other things that can lead to low cortisol like i've listed in the in the um in the blog post affecting the adrenal gland like you know can uh, sorry yeah, adrenal cancer tuberculosis um problems with the, in the brain affecting the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus, medications, genes, chronic stress. Yes, on the other hand, chronic stress could also lead to low cortisol levels. When it's prolonged, when it's prolonged, eventually can damage that HPA, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal um, function. That's the complex function that allows or the, that, that, that governs or regulates the um, production of cortisol. Other things like illness, sepsis, severe, that's a severe life-threatening um, condition where because of an infection from any part of the body leads to the shutting down of our, of our organs. 
um, can stress the body. So that is what you have with low cortisol levels. Symptoms might include uh, being tired, weakness, weight loss, low blood pressure, dizziness, tummy pain. There might be issues with menstruation and low blood sugar. Okay, so just a few interesting things about cortisol, buffalo hump. I've, I've come across people asking, what is the buffalo hump? So <clears throat> that's why I'm a bit disappointed with myself for not having that picture of um, cushions because I really thought when I said, I thought that would be a good one, a really good one to demonstrate uh, buffalo hump. Anyway, it is what it is. So buffalo hump just refers to the fat pad in between the shoulders that you may notice in some individuals or, you know, yourself, if you have this kind of imbalance, or if you do, then you should be thinking that, oh, wow, should I have my cortisol levels checked by my doctor? So you can see on this image on the right side, without the buffalo hump, you have a sort of nice trim <clears throat> back, upper back. But on the other side, where you have that fat pad that you can see the arrow demonstrating a sort of hunch or bulkiness around the shoulder, it could be a feature of somebody with high cortisol. So that's what the buffalo hump means. That's what that term refers to. Um, and so we, we describe it in the post as the accumulation of fat between the shoulders, often seen in people with excess cortisol, okay? Then the other one is the cortisol belly. And I've shown that a couple of times. Um, it is that situation where... <clears throat> where you have the accumulation of fat around the abdomen. Um, and, you know, it is, it's such a, you would know and you would agree with me, it's such a tricky, challenging situation because people will go on diets, they'll go on special exercises and all sorts of things to try and manage their belly fat or tummy, tummy fat and struggle to get rid of it for, you know, different reasons. And one of those reasons could be because of imbalance of cortisol. So what is um so what is the belly fat? What is the cortisol belly? So it's abdominal obesity, um, where you have accumulation of fat around the abdomen due to high cortisol level. And it may be from chronic stress, but it could also be from you know steroids and other medical conditions. We've talked about them already. Um, having high cortisol level, okay, can lead to overeating and weight gain, especially in the abdominal area. Um, and that includes both subcutaneous fat and deep fat, the visceral fat, okay? So that may explain why somebody is doing their best on their diet and doing their best on the um, uh, exercises, you know, the crunches, the hits and all the cardio and everything else, but still struggling to lose that excess fat around the core. Okay, so we've looked at different things around cortisol. We looked at the role of cortisol. Um, there's a brief mention about supplements that may be useful for reducing cortisol. Um, the key thing, how useful are they? It can vary from person to person. The most important thing um, is to talk to your health provider before starting any supplements, especially if you're, you're somebody who has um, um, imbalance in cortisol your practitioner should be involved in what the, 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 the appropriate treatment. And if you're thinking about supplements, then please make sure that they are aware of your plan or your intention. They can advise you and they can also um, ensure that it's not, it's not uh, interacting with any other medicine that you're taking. So things like, um, you know, ashwagandha, ashwagandha, rhodiola, for example, and then fish oil, magnesium, vitamin C, you have been thought that they may have some effect. But again, like I said, please, please speak to your practitioner before starting them. So we're talking about reducing cortisol, the key things, the key things. Now, if you have any of these symptoms that we talked about already, and you're just considering or concerned, hmm, I've been on this journey, uh, you know, I'm speaking to people perhaps um, late 30s, early 40s, going into our 50s or 60s, thinking about um, trying to have a stable weight but struggling, um, then it may be a good idea to have a look at your cortisol and have a chat with your doctor about, you know, looking at your cortisol levels. Um, for people who have excessively uh, quite high levels of cortisol, it wouldn't just be a weight problem as you would, you know, we talked about issues with blood pressure, issues with skin and bones and so on um, could also happen. Um, but there are stress management techniques. So if you're somebody whose levels are not severely high, but at a point where um, 
it to be useful, to, it could help with your weight control to maintain a balance, things like stress management. And for us, all of us, that could be different. It could be meditation, it could be yoga, deep breathing exercises, and um, regular activity. So, you know, getting a gym subscription, if you're not into gym, you know, walking regularly, dancing, whatever, swimming, whatever it is that rocks your boat, um, it is important to just be active. It's important to be active because you're not just targeting your um, the abdominal fat at that point. You're just trying to ensure a balance of your hormones and not just cortisol. Because like, like, like I said at the beginning, um, all these hormones are working hand in hand. Um, so it's, it's, it's good. These activities will help to keep you well overall. They will help to address high levels um, of many of these hormones um, because to an extent they control the they can affect the brain and the um uh, connection between the brain and the other organs responsible for developing these um, these organs and we do have studies that tell us about how um, activities like this outside of medication outside of surgery surgical treatments can have a positive impact so this is talking about lifestyle changes sleep is so important Sleep is so important. It's something that it's one of the things that we quickly lose in, 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 in high stress situations. One of the things that quickly is a victim is our sleep. We quickly sacrifice it, maybe not intentionally. I, I know, you know, <laughs> I know that one of the first things that goes really is sleep because you're either trying to work very, very, very hard to manage whatever the situation is or you're awake in bed worrying about the situation, whichever it is. So sleep is so important and important that when you're doing the exercise, when you're doing the activities, when you're doing, you know, the meditation and the deep breathing, you need to add in the regular sleep, six to eight hours um, at least um, for, for most of us. As we grow older, sometimes we, we can't manage, you know, the full uh, seven or eight hours. But trying to make sure that you create a space in your home where you have you know, you can, you can rest, you can, your eyes can shut, your body can rest. So sleep is so important. We shouldn't underrate it. Um, apart from sleep and exercise, of course, your food, nutrition, what we're eating, cutting down on processed food. I'm not going to make this complicated. I haven't got any specific eat that and don't eat that. We've, we've heard so much already about the potential impacts of, um, processed food on our health and so excessive amounts of processed food salt sugar all these are going to contribute towards imbalance of our hormones and particularly um cortisol so the rest of the post just looks at specific ways um uh, guidance around what you can you can do uh, emphasizes the fact that it's a holistic approach um being aware first of all being aware of cortisol's role in the body is important and once you figure it out that okay all this activity i've been putting in perhaps the reason i've not been successful is that my cortisol levels may not be what they should be and um, so you can have a chat with your practitioner like i've said about what your, your cortisol levels it can be measured there are tests that you can do at home there are tests that your doctor can arrange different types of tests and um, you can have the cortisol blood test or the um cortisol saliva saliva test um, which is what we, which is what we show. I think it's a thumbnail on one of the, on one part of the blog. So you can do that test at home and that will be useful to figure out what your cortisol um, levels are for your doctor, um, determine whether um, there are any imbalances that need correction and, you know, just give you, give you an idea of what else you can do in terms of providing the health that you need. Right, so let us round up um, today's presentation on cortisol. And please let me know if you have any questions on this subject. Um, you can share those in the community section. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. You can share those in the community section of this video, or you're very much welcome to share or uh, to send them to the email service. And then we can sort of chat if you want to talk about results or you want to talk about the symptoms that you're having. That is not a problem. So thank you so much for watching. Cortisol is an important hormone, so important in different activities around the body, as we've seen. Imbalance is an issue, not just whether it's too high or whether it's too low. Both of them can create problems. 
more commonly when it's not associated with severe conditions, um, it can be a challenge, especially around perimenopause or menopause. We also saw how it could affect us during uh, in younger women who are still having their periods and how it can affect one half of your cycle um, compared to the other. And so being armed with that information could, could help you plan ahead and you realize that you know, you're probably going to get much more work done in a faster or more effective way this time of the month compared to the second half of the month is just something to think about. So um, I hope that's been helpful. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And um, yeah, please give this video a like. And of course, do consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to do that. It's much, much appreciated. Thank you for spending this amount of time with me today. And then um, yeah, I'll see you again in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.